This is Richard Feynman, and he loved physics. Between 1918 and 1988, he developed quantum mechanics, won the Nobel Prize, and was the best known scientist in the world. What's less well known about him, however, is despite his obvious intellect and passion and drive, there were times where, in his own words, he said, physics disgusts me a little bit now, but I used to really enjoy doing it. When even the likes of Richard Feynman can become unmotivated about their one true passion in life, what hope do people like me have to stay motivated and want to consistently do things when I'm not even 100% sure they're my one true passion or the thing that I continuously want to do? Somewhat controversially on this channel, I've mentioned in the past that I rely mostly on my motivation in order to get things done. So today I've compiled the things that people like Richard Feynman, evidence-based science, and my own personal experience have taught me about the little mistakes that I've accidentally been doing in the past that end up lowering my motivation and make it in the long term harder for me to do things and enjoy doing them. So here's how to stay motivated, passionate, and driven about the things that we want. Let's get straight into it. Now, I'm going to jump straight in with the controversial mistakes, but I'm just going to try and explain this properly. Basically, the first mistake that I think used to trash my motivation was that I rewarded myself for doing things. And I think the solution to this is to never give myself rewards for doing activities. Please, please let me explain. This is based both on a lot of kind of evidence-based studies, but also my own personal experience. But basically what I used to do in the past is that, for example, throughout the year, if I knew that I needed a phone upgrade, or if I needed a new pair of shoes or a new coat or to go on a holiday or to do something nice for myself, what I would do is that I would kind of schedule these in either as a birthday gift or as a Christmas gift. Or for example, after an exam, I'm going to be allowed to buy this book that I really, really wanted, or I'm going to upgrade my phone if I finish this project or if I finally start this YouTube channel. Now, I no longer do this because I find that in the long term, this ends up destroying my intrinsic motivation for getting those tasks done. So I'm going to start with the studies themselves, but there's basically a huge body of evidence that shows that when children are rewarded for doing certain things, they end up enjoying those tasks a lot less and stopping them sooner. In one particular study, two groups of children were made to perform puzzles and only half of those children, so one group, were given rewards for doing the puzzle. These are the children that ended up enjoying the puzzles less and stopped doing them sooner than the other group that were never rewarded and just made to do the thing. Now, this might sound like forced action, but the way that these studies interpret this and the way that I see it too, is that when I am not giving myself an external reward for a specific action, I end up being much more likely trying to find intrinsic pleasure in doing the task itself. And I also find this in my own childhood, where there are activities for which I was not given any specific reward for completing, like painting or reading, and these are activities that I still very much enjoy as an adult because of the intrinsic pleasure in the activity itself, rather than other things that I was kind of encouraged or motivated or stimulated to do externally. I think I really internalized this parental role where I used to have a parent in the past tell me to do something and then reward me or only allow me to play computer games, for example, when I am done doing this task. And I think I never learned to actually trust myself and to do things because I wanted to do them or when I wanted to do them without this promise of a reward. So I kind of internalized this parent and always in the past I used to put rewards or put things in the end of doing tasks because I, in my mind, thought I would never do them if I didn't do this and also that I would be more encouraged to do things. This in my personal experience, just doesn't work. Another personal reason, if you are similar to me, where this reward for an activity ruins my motivation is because rewards spaced in time just don't work for me. If I promise myself that I'm going to give myself a gift in a month, that doesn't mean that I'm going to look forward to it more. It just means that I am going to look forward to it less and not even want the gift. I'm very much an immediate reward kind of person. I can be very impatient. So spacing out my rewards just makes me frustrated in the meantime time while then looking forward to something in the future. I know this would be different if you're not an impatient person, so this might not work for you, but I think this realization also made me think that actually there's no point in waiting for things and I can get them as soon as I want them. So if you also feel that to some extent you treat yourself like a child or you mistrust what you would naturally want to do, maybe that's because you've never naturally let yourself do the things that you want. Motivation itself is an intrinsic drive or desire, and if you're always cutting it off, by stopping yourself doing things, by redirecting your attention, by trying to redirect your motivation, then you never trust that you can do things yourself and you never flex or exercise this muscle. So I would really, really recommend just giving yourself rewards 
which can be very, very small things whenever you want them. Upgrading your phone when you need it, buying something new when you need it, watching the movie when you want to, rather than forcing yourself to do it as soon as you're done with an activity, which might lead you to resent the activity itself in the long term and to find that you are actually never building motivation for doing tasks, but you're just trying to negotiate with yourself for the rest of your life with bigger and unsustainable rewards or rewards for even basic things in order to get things done. So this is what I would recommend. Now, the second way that damages my motivation seems to perhaps on the surface contradict the first one, but there's one very, very subtle and very important difference that I want to get across. The second thing is underpaying myself for tasks that I am doing. Very importantly, this doesn't mean an extra gift or reward at the end of the task, but this is the specific payment or payoff, either emotional or physical for getting something done. Basically, this is connected to the Richard Feynman story. So the thing I first mentioned was that even though Feynman absolutely loved physics, he ended up resenting it when he had to give some lectures on aeronautics in Buffalo. And in his book, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, which is an absolute excellent read, would strongly recommend it. Actually, I'm going to check if there's a short form kind of summary that I would link below if you would like to see it there. Basically what happened to Feynman was that he was given extra money to travel to this town and give a physics lecture every weekend. And he would go there, he would give the lecture, he would stay the weekend and he would come back. And he ended up being completely burnt out and hating the whole experience. And his realization at some point was that he had a very poor person mentality and all the extra money that he was given for this inconvenience, he was just saving because he'd come from a poor background and he wasn't used to spending a lot of luck luxuries on himself. But his realization was that he was being paid this extra money to do a painful experience of traveling and being away from home. And so he decided that he was going to spend all the extra bits of the money in order to enjoy himself there. And suddenly the experience became fun. Now, if you're healthy, this might sound completely obvious, but in my case, I've in the past been the sort of person who expects myself to perform the same every single day. For example, I'm due to work three hours on a project. If it's a Monday, if it's a Sunday, if I had a terrible day, if I'd just been crying, if a friend just opened up with something tragic to me, I expect myself to be able to perform the same every single time. And I never realize that sometimes I'm working overnight or I need extra pay. In the same way that, for example, if you do a night shift as a doctor, you get paid extra money. If you don't end up kind of giving yourself a longer break, or if you don't end up spending a bit more money on yourself, you're going to end up resenting the task because it was done at a ridiculous expectation. So when I'm working an unpaid job, which is basically studying and everything that I need to do with myself, I will often ask myself if I'm doing overtime hours, if I'm working extra shift, if I'm working on a sick day, if I'm working when I'm unwell or sad or going through a difficult time, I will realize that this is kind of overtime. And for that reason, I deserve later perhaps a longer break or I deserve a small reward, something like getting my favorite juice at the shops or just getting my favorite lunch, for example. And very small things like this aren't necessarily huge gifts or rewards, but they're the fair pay for the work that I have done and kind of realizing that I should not expect myself to perform the same in every single case. And some jobs just require extra pay and using that pay on myself then means that I can maintain my motivation for a longer period, just like Feynman, and not end up burnt out and resenting what I'm doing because I'm working in a ridiculous state. Now, the third way that I can burn through my motivation is timing. And this is something that I am very interested in and super passionate about. Basically, my friends joke that I live in another space time because I have, in general, a very poor concept of what time is. My estimations of five minutes or 30 minutes or a day or an hour are just absolutely ridiculous. But that is beyond the point. I think the reason that I can stay more motivated than others sometimes for things has to do with my very poor concept of time. Because naturally, I don't tend to think of activities in terms of how long they take, but I think of them as an activity itself. And very interestingly, I was reading a book called 4,000 Weeks, where it was explaining how people in the past, for example, in the village, they never would think of time as being one hour or two hours. They would describe the time it took things in terms of activity 
activities it took. Medieval people, for example, would say that a task took a miserere while, I think that's how it's pronounced, which is approximately the time that it took to recite Psalm 50. Or for example, they said they would be back in the time that it took to bake bread. So this is how they would conceptualize things. And I think in the present day, of course, because we are very often paid by hours or we're expected to do things in hours, when it comes to self-work, I will also tell myself I'm going to do an hour's worth of studying or revision. And this just works very, very badly for me, mostly because I feel that I am stuck in a chair having to do something for let's say an hour and if I'm doing studying for example in the beginning I'm kind of going to be bored I know I can't do anything else because I forced myself to do it and I will just do a pitiful amount of work in the end try to make it through the hour maybe at some point become motivated then the hour is done I'm excited I can leave and this whole activity has just been miserable unmotivated and just completely pointless most of the time. Now, what I do is I break tasks into this medieval way of thinking where I go, oh, I'm going to revise the cardiac valves and this is the task that I'm going to do and I know that I'm happy just doing this in a whole day for example so even if it takes me five minutes or five hours very often I'm just happy doing it because I'm doing a task so if you also find that being forced to do work leads to very low amounts of motivation on your end perhaps just this subtle shift of thinking that you're going to complete a task and let that take however long it must put a timer on if you must stop and start something else or if you're expected to be somewhere but I wouldn't kind of do arbitrary work, which is why also I don't use the Pomodoro method and I have a whole video on why I hate it. But this is the exact same reason. I don't like doing forced work based on time, but I like doing specific tasks based on what I want to learn or what I want to accomplish, which I find to be much more fun, have much higher levels of motivation. And also it's almost like the difference between getting paid for a task and getting paid per hour. People are notorious saying that when people are paid per hour, they just do very unmotivated and unproductive work. But when people are paid to do a specific task, they're in and out of your house fixing your boiler in 15 minutes because that's just the time that it needs to get something done. So I also pay myself by the task that I do rather than by the hour. And this ends up ending, oh my God, that sounded very weird, um, <laughs> rewarding myself for the task rather than rewarding myself by the hour and getting something done. Anyway, moving on swiftly. Now, the next mistake that I used to make about my motivation is what I call digging into the trowel. And this is again, a reference to physics. So you can blame Richard Feynman for this, but basically I don't see my motivation for tasks to be separate from my overall life motivation and everything else that is happening in my life. So basically the way that I picture it is that everything that is happening, for example, my university, my body image, my relationships, my friendships, my connections with my family, the tasks that I'm doing, my job, my university, my exams, all of these have some sort of sine wave pattern where I'm happy and I'm sad and I'm happy and I'm sad. And this is just natural. These different sine waves will have different sort of frequencies and different sort of wavelengths. But basically the overall states that I am in my life is kind of a combination and a summary of all of these waves. And very often this might be baseline or slightly above baseline when I'm lucky, but there will be times just because of pure unfortunate circumstances that a lot of these waves, a lot of the trowels of these waves will superimpose and lead to this very deep pit of despair. And this is where sometimes for no reason, I don't know why, I'm just miserable. I'm just really, really sad. And that might be because for whatever reason, for a few hours or a few days, everything in my life might just not be going too well or might be a bit wobbly. And when I am in this case, I realise that my overall motivation, which is kind of the sum of all of these waves, my mood and motivation tend to be kind of very similar and very close to one another, is in the pits of hell. It says nowhere, it's gone, it's trashed. And I think if then I'm trying to force myself to do something, especially if this is something arbitrary, I am digging into the trowel deeper and I'm just digging myself deeper into a hole where I am kind of stealing from future motivation and I'm forcing myself to do something. It's miserable, it's sad. I'm going to prolong this pain and not get out of it faster. So, so basically what I tend to do at the moment, and it might sound very wishy-washy, but when I can afford to, and this is with self different tasks, I, before I do something or before I sit down to do something or plan to do something, I just take a second to check in on how I feel and where these waves lie and am I intrinsically motivated and am I intrinsically happy? And sometimes, especially if I have a very, very big task to do, for example, kind of scripting, conceptualizing, filming, editing, 
after editing and posting videos is a huge, huge task. And to do this, I get a lot more out of just spending 10 minutes or five minutes calling a friend or just sitting down with myself and writing why I'm feeling bad or why I'm not feeling well, rather than trying to push through and dig myself deeper into that trowel and do unmotivated work, which will just prolong my misery and make me sadder, especially because I haven't invested in making myself feel better and my work is probably going to be mediocre. So whenever I can't afford it, I tend to measure my levels of mood, try to invest in those rather than digging and pushing into my motivation further and further. And also realizing that even though my overall levels of motivation or mood might be quite low, there's always going to be a wave in there somewhere. And that may wave might just be my love for art or my love for music, which is usually very very high all the time and I can kind of rely on those things and pick out those waves themselves and do something enjoyable in order to invest in my motivation rather than kind of ignoring this whole thing and pretending or forcing myself to work just no matter what at every single case which I find to be very very unsustainable. Lastly I want to give the biggest thanks to the most appropriate sponsor ever for this video which are Brilliant. Brilliant is both a mobile app and an online platform that plays a huge role in maintaining, fueling and replenishing my motivation for studying sciences. Through doing different exercises you can reteach yourself what learning should be like as an adult and also you can re-energize and give yourself the motivation and the confidence in reapproaching things such as mathematics and logic, which have so many far reaching applications in our own personal lives. I love the way that Brilliant helps me almost relive the sciences and learning in the way that I wish it could have been done to me in the past in school, but also mathematics and logic. I would really, really recommend if you are an adult in any sort of STEM subject or doing any sort of science. And also for fun, I do like to do the physics, but admittedly that has less applications in my professional and academic life. So if you also want to check Brilliant out and see what I rave about quite a lot on this channel, there will be a link in my description, which will give you, I think 20% off or just the chance to kind of check it out and have a little trial and play around with the exercises and see what you can teach yourself and how you can re-motivate yourself to learn things in general. But on that note, thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you did, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think. Thanks. Bye.